barbecue. You folks like barbecue? If you like barbecue, go mm, mm, mm. These are pork chops, and these are hockey pucks. You ever tried eating a hockey puck? I have. See, a friend of mine gifted me one of those Omaha steak boxes, and when I cooked the pork chops, they turned out like hockey pucks. So naturally, I googled how to cook pork chops, and the answer I got was, I had to use an instant read meat thermometer. What? I need technology from NASA <laughs> to cook pork chops? <laughs> and I'm looking at my family tree. How come, <laughs> how come these folks were able to cook pork chops without a fancy thermometer? <laughs> and it turns out that you have to insert them to the exact center of the pork chop. If you go too far in or too far out, it doesn't quite work. So I'm a precision surgeon now. <laughs> I'm here to talk about excessive dependence on technology. It makes us weak. It makes us vulnerable. I like this tweet from Nassim Nicholas Taleb. We're overfed, overprotected, overmedicated, overeducated, and now we're overdependent on technology. See, our tools should be in proportion to the problem that they're trying to solve. Jay Z, one of my favorite songs, he says, we kill ants with a sledgehammer. You shouldn't kill ants with a sledgehammer. <laughs> An ordinary hammer is enough. <laughs> Michael, can you hold this for me for a bit? He's been doing CrossFit. He's, he's very strong. <laughs> I'm not anti-technology. I really love technology. I love what technology lets me do. For example, Watch what happens when I click this button here. And this button. <laughs> Dear audience, keep in mind, you can be replaced by technology. I love technology. I believe that nothing has given more joy, freedom, education, and capability to more humans and animals than the combination of technology and free market capitalism. My views about technology were shaped from having suffered under socialism in India. In the Indian constitution, the first sentence says, India is a socialist country. In India, Socialism means if you or your friends work for the government, you can become very rich. And for some reason, socialist governments don't like using technology to help less fortunate people. Socialism means that a quarter of India's population, more people than the US, don't have access to electricity. Socialism means that millions of poor children in India grow up living in shacks without access to toilets, drinking sewage every day, because the socialist government wouldn't allow technology and free market capitalism to solve these problems. Right now, the Indian government's biggest priority seems to be to ban Uber, the car service company, because the Indian government claims that women might get raped in Uber cars, which is only ironic because in, in India, 
The most likely place for a woman or a child to be raped is a government-owned police station. Yeah, there's a reason why inside the Indian government they call me Mr. Dirty Laundry. So I love technology and I believe that for people suffering under the oppression of socialism, the best way to help them is the combination of technology and free market capitalism. But we shouldn't become excessively dependent on technology either because it makes us weak, it makes us vulnerable. CMEs, the sun produces these things. In 1859, a big CME hit Earth and fried the telegraph system. For the younger folks here, Telegraph was the great-grandmother of Snapchat. <laughs> we barely missed one in 2012, and whenever the next one hits us, it's probably going to fry the internet and our electronics. The next nuclear war is going to involve EMPs. These are weapons intended to fry the internet and electronics. If you have complaints about the speed of your internet service right now, you're going to be really mad when one of these happens. Excess dependence on technology makes us weak, makes us vulnerable. All this magical technology that we love so much, poof, one day it's gone, no more magic. So what do we need to do? We need restraint, we need plan B. Now, in Rapid City here, we know restraint. When we want to give someone a compliment, we call them all right. That's a pretty big compliment here. <laughs> Telling someone that they're all right. That's restraint. What's plan B? I was hiking the Himalayas and I encountered an indigenous man who asked me if I had a spare box of matches. I did, I gave it to him and I asked him, what would you have done if I didn't have a spare? And he replied, Oh, I can make my own fire. I just prefer matches. <laughs> I like that. He enjoys technology, matches, but he has plan B. He can make fire. I want to live like that. We can live like that. Nassim Nicholas Taleb has many ideas on how to reduce excessive dependence on technology. I'll share a couple. He says, avoid high-tech smart foods that are supposed to be good for you. Remember trans fats? They were supposed to be healthy. Only eat foods that have been tested by time foods that have been in the human diet for hundreds of years. He says, stop trying to control the environment so much through air conditioning or by trying to kill off all the bacteria around us. Our bodies thrive on variation. Expose your body to different temperatures, to bacteria. Exposure is good for our bodies, up to a point, of course. I'm one of those people who used to get lost in his city park, <laughs> and so I'm addicted to GPS. And I'm learning to switch off my GPS. I'm learning about natural navigation. What a concept. Apparently, Humans have been navigating without GPS for generations. <laughs> Could come handy if the GPS systems 
get compromised. Cooking is such a sensual experience. Color, smell, taste, touch. We should all learn how to cook without needing a thermometer. When I cook for other people, of course, I use a thermometer for safety. <laughs> you, 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 don't, you sound skeptical. <laughs> but when I cook for myself, never. So the message I want you to take to your Congress people, to your city planners, to CEOs, to any leaders you know, Excessive dependence on technology makes us weak, makes us vulnerable. But I'm thinking this message doesn't quite have that Johnny Cochran quality to it. <laughs> you all know Johnny Cochran? You remember what he said to the jury? What did he say? If you, thank you, sir. You knew the whole thing. I was ready to give away half, but you knew the whole thing. Thank you, sir. If, you, if the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. It was so well said that 20 years later, we still remember it. So we need our slogan to have a Johnny Cochran quality to it. Now, unfortunately, I'm not very smart. I'm not very creative. And the best I could come up with was tech is best when less than excess. But if you have something better than this, send it to me. <laughs> and we'll update this. So, once again, tech is best when? Tech is best. <laughs> when less than excess. Rapid City, you're all right. <laughs> Thank you.